Hello, and welcome back to the Sportsified Podcast. I am Andrew, the better half of this show, here with my co-host Braylon, the obviously inferior host. Okay, buddy, I'll let you dream. Anyways, we're going to be talking about one of the biggest debates in the NBA community. That's right. Today, we traveled to the City of Angels to debate which team, the Clippers or the Lakers, should deserve the title of King of LA, team-wise. Subject to change over time. If we were talking about players, that title would go to LeBron at the moment, but that's a discussion for another day. Before we start the debate, let's take a look at the career of NFL quarterback Jared Goff. Jared Thomas Goff was born on October 14, 1994, in the relatively small city of Novato, California. He went on to play college football for the University of California, Berkeley. In 2015, he landed on the All-Pac-12 first team, and the next year, he became the number one overall pick to the Los Angeles Rams in the 2016 NFL Draft, staying in California. As a rookie, he was back up to Case Keenum in the first half of the season, but took over as the starter by the latter half. However, he lost all seven games that he started in, leading the Rams to a disappointing 4-12 record. The next season was the Rams' first with coach Sean McVay. Goff dominated against the Colts in Week 1, with a 72% completion rate and a 46-9 win. He saw similar success in a couple of games after that, but saw a turn for the worse against the Seahawks in Week 5. He had two interceptions and no touchdowns in a 10-16 loss. He didn't play great the week following, but eventually regained momentum for the rest of the season. Goff and the Rams lost in the first round of the playoffs, but he was named to the Pro Bowl as a backup for Carson Wentz and was named the 38th best player in the National Football League. 2018 treated Goff well, as he led his Rams to a 13-3 record and a number 2 seed in the playoffs. The Rams won their first two games, including a nail-biter against the Saints that went into overtime. This led them to their first Super Bowl in 17 years, and they were up against the Patriots. He struggled in that game with a mere 50% completion rate, and threw a late-game interception that arguably cost them the title of Super Bowl champions. They lost 13-3, which tied them with the 1971 Dolphins for the fewest points in Super Bowl history. Ouch. The 2019 season didn't fare much better for him, but it certainly started out well. He agreed to a four-year extension with the Rams that included $110 million in guaranteed money, setting an NFL record for money of the guaranteed variety. The best kind, if you ask me, other than free money, which doesn't really exist. Too bad it doesn't. But anyways, the Rams started out well with a 3-0 start, but they lost a 40-55 game against the Buccaneers in Week 4. That's pretty high scoring. In Week 16, they were officially eliminated from playoff contention when they lost 31-34 against the 49ers. They were able to conclude the season with a 31-24 win against the Cardinals, but the Rams still ended the season at 9-7. Goff finished the season with 4,638 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, and 16 interceptions. This was worse than his 2018 season, which is concerning for his future. So, that brings us to the present, and Goff still has many years to sculpt his legacy. But for now, it's time for our long-awaited debate. Now, for the main part of our show, cue the lights, Braylon. Um, this is a podcast. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Cue the dramatic music, then. That I can do. Los Angeles. The city for all things relating to entertainment, sports, and culinary adventures. Today, we go on a trip to the Staples Center, home of not one, not three, but two of the most dominant teams in the NBA today. That's right. We're talking about the Clippers and the Lakers. L.A. versus L.A. LeBron James and Anthony Davis versus Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. A basketball debate for the ages. I will be on the side of the Lakers. An easy win, in my opinion. Nah, Clippers for the win all day. We already got you 2-1 to one in the season series so far. Head-to-head isn't everything, Braylon, and three games is not a very big sample size. 
True, but do you have Lou Will and Montrez Harrell off the bench? Uh, no, but you don't have Kyle Kuzma and Rajon Rondo either. Uh, but what the Clippers do have is very good depth. As well as the aforementioned Williams and Harrell coming off the bench for the Clips is Reggie Jackson, Landry Shamit, Patrick Peterson, and Joe Kanoa. Who do the Lakers have besides Kuzma and Rondo? Jared Dudley? Mm, you're forgetting about Dwight Howard, Alex Crusoe, Deion Waiters, and Markeith Morris. Okay, so I admit, the benches are pretty much even. The Clippers might have a slight edge there, but let's talk about the starting lineups. If you say so. We got the likes not on LeBron and AD, but you can't forget about Danny Green, Avery Bradley, and JaVale McGee. AD and LeBron are obviously superstars, but the other three aren't slouches by any means. Danny Green, for example, averages 1.2 steals per game, which is on par with LeBron. That's pretty impressive considering LeBron is on the court for almost 10 minutes more than Green. The Clippers' defense is right there, though, as Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are both some of the best stoppers in the league. The other Morris brother, Marcus, also can't be forgotten. He averages almost a steal and block a game, and the center, Ivica Zubak, also contributes a block per matchup. Oh, so you want to talk centers. We have not only Anthony Davis, who plays forward and center, but you have McGee as well, who is a lot better than his stats might show. He has the best shooting percentage out of the Lakers starting five at 64%, and while his three-point attempts may only be 0.1 a game, his three-point percentage is 50%, which is pretty epic if you ask me. Yeah, on six attempts. He's just cautious, you know? Shoot when he knows he can make it, duh. Yeah, right? He's the most surprised one in the building when it goes in. Not that the Clippers centers are any better. Okay, before we continue our debate, let's hear a quick message from our sponsor. And we are back. We haven't discussed point guards yet, so let's go ahead and do just that. Oh wait, are we categorizing LeBron at point? Yup. He started nearly every game at point, so of course we are. Well, then the point position is probably a lost argument for the Clippers, but let's do it anyways. Patrick Bradley isn't all that bad, right? Uh, are you sure about that? What, so he did average just 8 points, 5 boards, and 4 assists. It's his defense and energy that really matters. After all, he did average a whopping 1.1 steals a game. Wow, I thought that number was going to be a lot bigger. Moving on. So the Lakers are winning in the point guard and center parts of the starting lineups, but the, pl- but the Clippers got them with the bench. Let's talk forwards. Since I'm obviously going to win for the third time in a row, I'll let you go first. Kawhi Leonard, our starting small forward, is a four-time All-Star, nine-time All-League selection, and one of the greatest defensive players in the NBA. At power forward, we got Marcus Morris, who is better than you may think. He averaged 17.5 points this year before the season ended. Yeah, but that average is skewed by his 19 a game for the Knicks before he got traded. With LA, he's only put up 9 a game. Oh shoot, I was hoping you didn't catch that. Okay, who are your forwards? <laughs> you see, we have Danny Green for a small forward and Anthony Davis a power forward. Kawhi is obviously better than Green, but AD is a top 5 player in the league. I really don't think Marcus Morris even comes close. Sadly agreed. Let's wrap this thing up by comparing shooting guards. This is where Paul George finally comes into play. PG provides the top scoring option for the Clippers, as well as being one of the most clutch players in the league. Yeah, the Clips win here. I got Avery Bradley, who only drops 9 a game. So to wrap this up, the Lakers are better at point guard, power forward, and center. The Clippers are better at shooting guard, small forward, and they have a slight advantage at their bench. Well, I hate to admit this, but I think that if the Clippers and the Lakers meet in the Western Conference Finals in Orlando, the Lakers would probably pull out the win in 7 games. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Although it is very close, so I can see it going either way. Overall, the Lakers are stronger at the moment, but don't count the Clippers out yet. Wow, that debate was something. Yeah, for sure. We're curious, though, as to what you guys think, so shoot us an email at sportsifiednews at gmail.com, and we will respond within 24 hours. Thanks again for listening to Sportsified News. As always, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check out our website at sportsifiednews.wixsite.com slash home.